really understand someone is listening or, or not. And neither the sender nor the receiver is aware of that kind of third party people that reading your message, right? So however, it's feasible to prevent, right? Usually by means of encryption. If you use the encryption, of course, you can somehow prevent this kind of attack, all right? So the active attack involves some modification of the data streams or the creation of a false stream and can be subdivided into four categories, right? The first one is a, a masquerade, all right? A masquerade takes place when one entity pretends to be a different entity, okay? A masquerade attack usually includes one of the other forms of active attack, for example, authentication sequence can be captured and replayed after a valid authentication sequence has taken place, for example. Okay. A reply, the second one, involves the passive capture of a data unit and its subsequent retransmission to produce an unauthorized effect. Okay. So involve the passive capture of data unit and its subsequent retransmission to produce an unauthorized effect. Right? The third one is modification of message. Simply means that some portion of a legitimate message is altered or that message are delayed or reordered to produce, uh, to produce an authorized effect. For example, a message meaning allow John Smith to read, for example, the confidential file accounts. Then it will be modified to allow someone else, for example, allow Fred or Ali uh, to read the confidential file accounts. So that is an example of that. The fourth one is the denial of service, right? Which prevents or inhibits uh, the normal use of management of communication facilities. Refer to the availability, if you remember. This attack might have a specific target. For example, an entity may uh, suppress all messages directed to a particular destination. For example, the security audit service. Another form of service denial or denial of service is the disruption of an entire network, either by disabling the network or by overloading it with a lot of messages. Okay. So the active attacks present the opposite characteristics of the uh, what you call it the uh, passive attacks. Whereas the passive attacks are difficult to detect, measures are available to prevent. On the other hand, if we look at the active attack, it's quite difficult to prevent the active attack, guys. Okay? Because of the wide variety of potential physical software network vulnerabilities. But instead, the goal is to detect the active attacks and to recover from any disruption. That is easy because uh, active attack normally they, they try to modify the messages. So that could be easy to detect. But passive, you know, is not easy to detect. Easily can be uh, prevent. Okay. So the X100 document defines a security services as a service that is provided by a protocol layers of communication open system or OSI and that ensures the adequate security of the system or of data transfer, right? Uh, perhaps a clear definition, you can find it in RFC 4949. So pro we, this one provides the following definition, like a processing or communication service that is provided. You can look at that uh, two documents and you can get the enough information out of it, okay? Uh, so the X800 uh, uh, divides the three services into five categories. So the first one is authentication, access control. Uh, we discuss about data confidentiality, integrity, and non-repudiation. Okay. So if you look at this uh, table, uh, we are not going to go through the details, but it's very useful table, guys. Believe me. You can look at the, uh, you know, uh, actually divided the services into five categories, the X800, right? And 14 specific services. So you can see the services uh, for authentication, access control, data confidentiality, data integrity, and non-repudiation. So you can see the complete information of it. For example, for authentication, 
so uh, the assurance that communication entity is the one that is claimed to be we call it authentication so we have peer entity authentication we have data origin authentication and uh, some other information that you can refer to in this table okay uh, in the following slides we are going to explain what uh, all of this okay so the authentication service is concerned with assuring that a communication is authentic in the case of a single message such as a warning or alarm signal the function of the authentication service is to assure that uh, the uh, recipient that the message is from the source that is claimed to be from so we have to make sure that it's from the right person okay so two specific authentication services are defined one is a peer entity authentication and the second one is the data origin authentication so the first one provides for the uh, uh, corroborations of the identity of a peer entity in an association two entities are considered peers if they implement to same protocol in different systems for example two tcp modules we don't want to go through the details so i think that should be enough of that and the second one is the data origin authentication right so the next one is the access control we had five categories right the second one is access control in the context of network security the access control is the ability to limit and control the access to the host system and application via communication links later in uh, basically in our uh, online class which will uh, we will work with the packet tracer the cisco packet tracer software uh, over there we will see how basically we can uh, configure our routers to limit the access control okay to achieve this each entity trying to gain access must first be identified or authenticated so that access right can be tailored to the individuals as well right we can do that in fact so the data confidentiality confidentiality is the protection of transmitted data from passive attack all right with refer to the content of a data transmission so several levels of protection can be identified uh, the browser service protects all users that transmitted between two users over a period of time for example when a tcp connection is set up between two systems this broad uh, protection prevents the release of any user data transmitted over the tcp connection for example okay so the narrower forms of this service can also be defined uh, including the protection of a single message or even specific fields within a message so that also need to be uh, protected okay so that is the protection of a traffic flow from the analysis so this requires that an attacker not be able to observe the source and destination frequency length or other characteristics of the traffic on a communication facility that we call it the confidentiality so what do you think uh, is it providing the confidentiality is easier or integrity all right that is almost always is a question of course uh, integrity okay confidentiality is very very difficult to be provided all right so let's look at the data integrity can apply to a stream of message a single message or selected fields within a message we can have the uh, data integrity okay connection a connection oriented integrity service uh, one that deals with a stream of message assures that the messages are received as sent with no duplication insertion uh, insertion or uh, modification or reordering or replace so we have to make sure of that okay a connection less integrity so we have connection oriented we have connection less I, I think you are familiar with these two terms, right? Uh, that one deals with the individual message without regard to any larger context and generally provide the protection against the message modification only. Okay, that is a difference between these two. 
So the non-repudiation prevents either sender or receiver from denying a transmitted message. Uh, when a message sent, the receiver can prove that the sender is uh, in fact sent the message. Similarly, when a message is received, so the sender can prove, you know, the right person received the information. So that is very important. We call it non-repudiation. Okay. Availability service. So um, both uh, we, we look at the X hundred and RFC four nine four nine documents. They define the availability to be the property of a system, or a system resource being accessible and usable up on demand by an authorized system entity. So that is very important. We have discussed before. A variety of attacks can result in the lose. Uh, or reduction in availability. Sometimes we can uh, lose the availability. Sometimes we can have the reduction in availability. So some of these, I can, uh, um, uh, we have discussed some of these, I can, and we will discuss later also in more details. Okay. Uh, so the second one is the availability service, one that protects a system to ensure its availability addresses the security concern raised by denial of service attack. You remember when we discussed about the DOS or denial of service attack, we said the main issue that will be altered is availability. So that need to, need to be considered. So uh, this table, table 1.3, lists a security mechanism that defined in X100. Uh, X800, the mechanism are divided into uh, those that are implemented in a, a specific protocol layer, you know, such as a TCP or an application layer. So uh, we will look at it like that. Okay, this mechanism will be covered in the appropriate places uh, in that book. So later we can see. Uh, let's look at the security uh, uh, specific security mechanism, like you know. Uh, NC ferment, we have a digital signature, we have access control, data integrity, authentication, exchange, and so on and so forth. And we have a pervasive security mechanism like trusted functionality, security label, and so on and so forth. Okay. So <clears throat> that table 1.4 can show you, yeah, that one also is based on uh, one in X. Uh, 800, which indicates the relationship between the uh, security services and security mechanism. So here you can see the security services like peer entity authentication, data origin authentication that we have discussed already, and here the relation with the uh, mechanism over the uh, places that we have. For example, NC ferment we have in the peer entity authentication is yes, digital signature. For example, for the peer entity authentication is yes, right? It's available over there. Okay, so despite the years of research and development, it has not been possible to develop a security design and implementation technique that uh, systematically exclude the security flows and prevent all authorized actions. So that is not possible. In the absence of such foolproof techniques, it is useful to have a set of widely agreed design principle that can guide the development of protection mechanism. So the National Centers of Academic Excellence in Information Assurance or Cyber Defense, which is jointly sponsored by the U.S. National Security Agency and the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, lists the following as fundamental security design principles. So the first one is economy of mechanism. Fail-safe defaults, complete mediation, open design, separation of privilege, least privilege, and so on and so forth. Okay. So the first eight listed principles were initially proposed in uh, another document that have reached so the, the, the test of the time. Uh, this is just uh, to know, you know, not necessarily to be memorize for example that is a fundament, uh, fundamental security design principles right the economy of mechanism means that the design of security measures embodied in both hardware and software 
should be as simple and small as possible okay that is the first one the motivation for this um, principle is that relatively simple small design is easier to test and verify right with a complex design there are many more opportunities uh, for attacker to discover the sub of weaknesses and they can exploit it and then then they can you know attack the system back okay and there are some other principles that is not really necessary to go through it okay so i just can uh, ignore this kind of the design principle uh, explanation the next one is an attack surface which consists of the reachable and exploitable vulnerabilities in a system. Example of attack surfaces are the following. The first one is the open ports on outward facing web and other servers. I, I'm sure that you are quite familiar with this kind of attack. Service available on the in 